Greetings and welcome to Tarland with Tarlene. Guess what? It's story time. Is everybody ready? No? Yes. Yeah? Mama Bear says, yes, I'm ready. We have a kitty. See? And Mama Bear. And reading a beautiful book. And the doggies. And my piggies. All right. So, it was a beautiful day. I saw my grandkids, my son, my Jessica, my baby bear, Bethy. I didn't get to see my two men, but I love him. And we, I spoke to him. So, here we go. I don't know if that's going to come in very clear, but... Welcome to story time in Tarland. I made just a fire. So I picked the book. Just let me, oops, wrong way. Just let me get set up, my friends. My grandkids are probably trying to sleep. Ooh. Um, yeah. But that's okay. If they're not, they can... Listen to a story, Daddy and Mommy, from Grammy. On grandparent Grandmother's Day, by the way. Did you know that? I've never heard of it. It's my first time. It was on the calendar. I don't know. I've never seen that before. Is that uh, unusual for anyone else who got ripped out of 28 years of... No, not 28. Because, yeah, no, that's Jordan. Um, well, yeah, with Mason, right? All them years... Anyways, it's story time. On Grandmother's Day. So here's a story from Grammy. I picked one of my very oldest first books I ever had. I've been keeping them, you know, quite a while. And I will show you exactly in one minute. I love you very much. And if I don't know you and you have children and they can't sleep, there's a beautiful fire. And, uh, wonderful little story and I appreciate you visiting T-Star 13 my YouTube page for stories and poetry and some of my musings about life here we go get some popcorn no don't it's bedtime <laughs> get your pillow and your blinky get all snug as a bug in a rug go and give mommy and daddy a hug because it's time for Grammy time with bed knobs and broomsticks. And I'm sorry if I can't see every page clearly because, you know, I'm outside having a fire, having a backlit lamp. I'm not a professional. I'm just having fun. I like to read. I like to write. But I want to show you this. I, I, I'm telling you, I've had this since I was very small. Ooh, that didn't work. And I'm going to read this because I haven't not seen this in a very long time. I just dug it out of a box for story time. And I know my handwriting when I was little. Oh, my man. Okay, let me set it up. This is my first time doing this. I'm sorry if you can't see, but I'll read it to you. I might cry. I'm a very sentimental person. See my name? What's my name? Charlie? <laughs> oh, my land. Okay. Oh, there's my other name. Because I used to be a Jones. It says, you know what? I'm going to have to put it over here for a minute, okay? So I can read to you. Patricia Jones was married to Mel Jones. We lived at 475 Bramley Road, yeah. Brampton, Ontario. Bramley, yeah. 1981 to 83 was with Mel Jones. Okay, so there's a memory I wrote in my book. Yeah, I remember those years. Okay, what does this say? Because my phone's in the way. 
I have a broom just like in this book. It's a symbol for letting your heart and soul soar. Enjoy my broomstick. Love Grammy T. Darlie Allen, 21370, forever with you. Well, look, I wrote just a note. Imagine that. <laughs> Let's turn the page and see what else I wrote. This book, Golden Press. What was that? Copyright 1971. I was one years old. This is very special book. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next time I do this, I'll have it all set up properly, but you know. Here we go. And hello to my grandchildren. Mr. Mason, Lovey Leila, and my tremendously Tobias. Grammy on a broomstick. Kidding. <laughs> okay, let's be serious and read a story. Did you go pee? You better hurry up. I know how this works. Hit pause. I'm going to read now. Oh, let's look at the fire. I put magic fire in there. It's kind of blue. But anyways, we should go back to the book before the fire goes out. Miss Eglantine Price was a witch. Or at least, she was learning to be one. England was at war and Miss Price wanted to help. Every night, she studied the lessons in witchcraft that came to her from London. And every night, she learned something new. All kinds of strange things that just might someday be useful in the war effort. One night, she even learned how to fly a broom. Can you see the fire? Put that there. Is that okay? There. It was hard work learning to be a good witch. Miss Price needed to study in secret, so she was not at all happy when Charlie and Carrie and Paul, three orphans from London, came to stay with her until the war was over. They were not happy either. In fact, they were climbing out the window, about to run away the night Miss Price practiced flying on her broom. Cor! exclaimed Paul. He pointed at Miss Price, jerking madly across the night sky on her broomstick. She's a witch! gasped Gary. Hang on! said Charlie. This is an opportunity. She's got a secret, right? So? <gasps> She'll probably give us all kinds of good things if we promise to keep her. Her secret. Ooh, what a conniving. Oh, yeah, look at this. What's gonna happen? But even Charlie was amazed at what Miss Price did give them. It was a witch's spell. I'll put a traveling spell on this bed knob from Paul's bed, she said. Now the bed will take you anywhere. I don't believe it, <sighs> said Charlie, staring at the knob. Then I'll show you, said Miss Price, laying back, just interestingly, watching the children explore. The, I had lips, sorry, not really. I must get to London. My last lesson in witchcraft never came, and I must have it. It's a special spell to make a thing move all by itself. I must find my teacher, Professor Brown, and get the spell from him. Hop onto the bed. They all scrambled onto the bed. Tap the bed knob three times, Paul. Paul tapped. The knob began to glow. Then. We're going, cried Carrie. We're really going. And they were. Over the village, across the fields of England, straight to the great city of London, they flew. And at last they arrived at Professor Brown's house. Quickly, Miss Price explained what she wanted. Hmm. Take a guess. I wonder what she could have wanted. Any ideas yet? Use your imagination. 
Don't forget because next time I see you, I want to know what you thought. Because I'm not there to hear you talking to me constantly. I love you. But, madam, said Professor Brown, I have lost the last lesson. I know there are five magic words that make things move, but I have no idea how to find them. Hoi! exclaimed Paul. He had been looking at a children's book from the professor's bookshelf. Here's a story about five magic words. They're on a stone called the Star of Astaroth. And that's on the Lost Isle of Nabumbu. No such place, scoffed Charlie. It's only a story. It's to such a place, shouted Paul. Here's pictures. <laughs> well, said Miss Price. If a Nambubu does exist, the bed will take us there. Hop on, everyone. Paul tapped the magic bed knob. Bed, he commanded. Take us to Nabumbu. Swoosh! The bed was up, off, and over the sea. It flew through the sky, whirling to and fro from one world to another. Then it dipped down, down, into a beautiful lagoon, where it was pulled to the shore by a burly bear fisherman. What does that look like, children? A burly bear fisherman. Can you see that? Can you use your imaginations? What does that look like in your mind's eye? Hmm, draw me a picture. Where are we, Miss Price began, but she never had a chance to finish. Can't you read the signs? The bear demanded. No peopling allowed on Nabumbu. You all get thrown back. But first, interrupted Paul, we get to see the Lion King. <gasps> Anybody can see the king. And he showed where it said so in the book. How's the fire? How's the little girl? How are you guys listening to a story? By Granny. All right. Grumbling, the bear led them to the king, who was in a frightful rage. Great roars were going from the royal tent, and things were being thrown out in a steady stream. Whew. He's angry, explained the bear, because no one will referee his favorite game, soccer. Hi, baby bear. Baby Beth, you, my daughter, she loves, she loves soccer. Baby Beth. Soccer? said the professor. Maybe we can work something out. I'm a soccer expert myself. I think they should ask Auntie Beth. He went into the tent alone. Miss Price was worried, but soon the roars grew quieter. And after a few minutes, Professor Brown in a referee's uniform came out with the king. Hmm. <gasps> Look! The professor pointed secretly to something hanging around the king's neck. The star of Astaroth, he whispered. I mean to borrow it during the game. Oh, do be careful, Miss Price whispered back. Please. The game was a rough one for the king's team. Didn't play by the rules. Yeah, like one did they ever. The poor referee was nearly trampled many times. But he finally managed to exchange his whistle for the star. See here, he whispered proudly. I have it. But at that very minute, the king discovered his loss. Come back at once, he roared. And he charged toward them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, greetings. She looks like, oh, yes, come, come to me, darling. Let's have a cup of tea. <laughs> the bed knob, Paul cried Miss Price, and Paul wildly searched his pockets. The king was almost up them, upon them. Miss Price, Carrie shrieked, do something! And Miss Price did. 
After looking quickly at her notebook to be sure she had the spell right, the king was suddenly turned into a rabbit. A rabbit with a lion's tail. Bother, said Miss Brace. That was a poor spell, and I so hate sloppy work. Just then, Paul found the knob. Bed, he commanded. Take us home. Away they flew. But when home at last, Professor Brown carefully unwrapped his handkerchief, the star of Astaroth, with the five magic words, was gone. I should have known we couldn't bring it back from another world, said Miss Price sadly. That's kind of the way it works. Can't take your treasures to heaven either. Alright. Ooh, what's going on here, kids? This looks... Ooh, how's that look? What do you think is going to happen next? Tell Grammy Bear. What do you guys think? But I know the word, said Paul. Chaguna McCoy de Chakorum Satis De. They're right here in the book. Miss Price stared at him. Could it be that Paul had known the right words all the time? She tried to think of a test, but just then there came a tremendous knocking on her door. Enemy soldiers had landed in Miss Price's village. Cor! exclaimed Charlie. Now what do we do? Coming up next, yeah. Hmm. One second, right. That one. The soldiers didn't know that Miss Price was a witch, but who does? But nevertheless, they ordered everyone in the house taken to a nearby castle and locked up. Then they went on their plans to capture the village. Miss Price was desperate. The spells she had learned were in her notebook in her workshop, and she couldn't remember a single one. I know I feel that way when I'm trying to do my poetry. How about trying the new spell, where you make things move about? Asked Charlie. You have the words for that one. But I need things to work it on, said Miss Price. She looked around at the flags, the weapons, the armor, and the castle. They were centuries old, and it was silly to think that they could be any help, but, well... She would have to try. Traguna, she said. The coides, the chorum, satis. She looked around. The battle flags, the drums, the trumpets, the armor. Everything was very still. Would the spell work? Could the village be saved by a witch? And a beginning witch or that? Miss Price took a deep breath and said the last word. D! For a moment, nothing happened. Then... Carrie said, in a hushed whisper, Do you see there? Do you? Can you see there too? What do you see? She pointed to the flags. They were waving just the least bit. Then a drumstick gave a single tap. Soon trumpets rose and blew. Assembly! At the sound, the, vis the visors on the 12th century helmets closed with a snap. A suit of armor drew its sword. Behind it, a whole row of suits of armor began to squeak and clink. Can you see that, babies? The trumpets blew. Advance! And everything moved forward. Miss Price saw a guard open the outside door and looked in to see what was going on. Out marched the suits of armor, right over the guard and onward. Miss Price told the children to take safety behind a wall. Then, wearing a war helmet, she leapt on a broomstick and fluttered into the lead. She waved a sword as a sign of command. By the way, the word sword is an anagram for word. Words. Oh, look, a leaf. <gasps> look it, I have a gift in the book that I put there. How many, oh my goodness gracious me, how many million years ago? I mean, a couple tens, 
Look, this is from Ontario. This is from when I was a little girl in Wallaceburg. Or Brampton. Or Bramley. Back in 1970, 71. Yeah. Oh my land. Okay. You have to be careful with that. Look at that precious little thing. <gasps> okay. I have to put it somewhere one moment. Might as well wet my whistle since we're almost done. <clears throat> what do you think's gonna happen? What if you wrote the end of the book? Look at the picture. Can you imagine? Can you read? You could read it yourself. When the enemy soldiers saw Miss Price's army moving toward them, they stood and stared. They didn't believe in witches, of course, and yet there was Miss Price on a broomstick. And behind her, open fire, yelled the colonel. I can't yell too late right now because people are probably sleeping. But the suits of armor continued to march forward. Nothing stopped. Miss Price's army. The soldiers turned in terror and ran. They scrambled wildly into their boats and rowed furiously away from the shores of England. Do 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 do. Skip skip. After the last of the enemy had disappeared and the spell had worn off, Miss Price and all her friends returned to her house. Her workshop lay in ruins. Oh, my land! Imagine that feeling. Tragic! exclaimed Professor Brown. All your lovely spells. Still, murmured Miss Price, I was able to perform a small service first. I did my part. Are you going to be a witch anymore? demanded Charlie. No, Miss Price shook her head. No, she said gently. I think not. Well, that's it, said Charlie. Guess we aren't going to have fun anymore. But Paul wasn't so sure. Still got this, haven't I? <gasps> Is that? Hmm. As long as you had that, anything can happen. And I bet you have one too in your mind. Because we are the bed knobs and the broomsticks. Let's go fly. I love you, sweet dreams. God bless you. Want to pray? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, Creator, keeps me safe. Remember, Grammy loves you. And while you sleep, I send you my love. For always to keep. And I'll be right back soon for another story time with Tarly and Tarland on my brand new YouTube channel, T Star 13. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for clicking liking and thank you for clicking share. You never know. People right now might need a story, young and old. I love stories. And pretty soon when I Deal with the fire. I might go into the Zen zone and read you another hour of um, Ready Player Two. I mean, Ready Player One. Because you're number two. You're my number two. See you soon.